Well, let's bring in now National Senator Bridget McKenzie and former Labor MP Michael Danby. Welcome to you both. Look, let's start with the appointment of the new ADF chief, David Johnston, this week. Bridget, there's been a lot of criticism from Michael Shoebridge, um, uh, Greg Sheridan, Peter Jennings, that it's just more of the same leadership. But what do you think? Well, obviously, we want to thank um, Angus Campbell, the outgoing CDF, for his service to this country and, and wish Vice Admiral David Johnston all the very best in the new appointment come July. I think the first battle uh, the new CDF is going to face is actually convincing the Defence Minister of the geostrategic issues that we've got before us and to ensure that the Minister has the fights within ERC, has the fights around the Cabinet table to make sure our Defence Force has the investment that it needs in capability uh, to actually meet those geostrategic challenges. Yeah, it is a very volatile environment that we're living in at the moment. Um, on another topic, NDIS Minister Bill Shorten has reminded states that being a violent criminal is actually not a disability after we've had some shocking stories this week. Uh, Michael Danby, how do you think the federal government is handling this misuse of NDIS funds? Well, badly. I think there's... Um... Uh, a huge expenditure on this uh, uh, admittedly um, uh, humanitarian area where we all should have sympathy with uh, with people who have uh, uh, disabilities. Uh, but um, we're spending much, much more than we planned when the scheme was framed. And Bill has not only to solve this particularly odious case, but um, the level of expenditure that we're making, say compared to defence, which is uh, uh, being very poorly spent on compared to other uh, Western economies facing the China challenge. Yeah, it's a good point, actually, Bridget, when the comparison between the amount of our... Mm. the proportion of our budget spent on NDIS versus defence. Yeah, it is. And I mean, we want to live in the type of society where we care for the most vulnerable and we are all on a unity ticket for that. We're, the NDIS has bipartisan support. Uh, but you've got to ask questions about the criteria, the way it's being run, when currently it would seem the NDIS is being used to transition uh, people from the justice system into the community with serious psychosocial um, you know, uh, issues and mm. using the NDIS to solve those or to address those is not why it was set up. The Minister, Bill Shorten, I hope he is going to actually reform the NDIS, but of the 640,000 Australians that are on it, we need to know how many are serious uh, criminals, uh, how many workers and carers are being exposed daily uh, to potentially um, people who've committed mm. serious crimes. Mm. Michael Danby, Foreign Minister Penny Wong, last night, as we've been speaking about, outlined her case for a future Palestinian state, essentially rewarding Hamas for the attack six months ago. Yeah. Penny Wong and Albo shout and bully at the tiny democracy, mm -hmm. Israel in the Middle East, but they're pussycats when it comes to China. Never hear a word from them about the Uyghurs or the Tibetans or the poor people in Hong Kong who are crushed uh, every day under the communist boot. Uh, never a word. But um, uh, after Israel, um, despite the fact that they dismissed those two officers and considering charges by themselves, we have the chutzpah to have an Australian air marshal being appointed to supervise the Israeli democracy. My goodness me. Can, can you imagine if America or the UK said we'd have an investigation into the uh, civilian deaths caused by uh, ADF, according to the Brereton report? We wouldn't tolerate it. Um, interfering in a democracy uh, for bogus um, virtue signalling reasons here to the Greens and to the uh, Western Sydney seats. Mm. Bridget? Michael... Yeah, Michael's absolutely right, um, as usual, on this topic, uh, Shari. I think it's been an appalling 24 hours for Penny Wong uh, to actually pay domestic politics with such a serious issue, as if Penny Wong 
in her naive display last night at ANU was somehow going to solve the be the peace broker in the Middle East is just she's just kidding herself. This is absolutely a domestic play here at home for those who are sympathetic uh, to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. When asked this morning on uh, the ABC if Foreign Minister, you don't think Hamas has any uh, future in Gaza. Mm -hmm. What is your response to the incursion in Rafah? And she couldn't answer it. Because the only way to make sure Hamas has no future in Gaza is to allow the IDF to get into Rafah, get rid of the last four to six battalions of Hamas, and then we can demilitarise Gaza and... Arab states can play a really significant role in uh, de-radicalising that part of the world over coming generations. But until you get rid of Hamas, who mm. are you actually dealing with to talk about a two-state solution? Which is pie-in-the-sky stuff to win votes from the Greens in inner-city mm. seats, and it's incredibly divisive uh, when we've always had a bipartisan approach to this mm. particular topic. Bridget, yep. Wong and Albo can't even solve the juvenile delinquency problem in Alice Springs. Ex exactly. How are they going to solve the Middle East from Adelaide? I mean, what I a mean, joke. What yeah. a joke they both are on yeah. this. They Michael, know nothing. Why I don't you go wanna... there, Albo? Are you a coward? Yeah, and can I just... De Michael, yeah. you're dead right. I mean, we've heard a lot about the tragic death um, of a foreign aid worker, uh, an Australian, but mm. that is the second Australian killed in this conflict. And when she had the chance as foreign minister to attend the kibbutz where, um, you know, the other Australian actually Galit lost Kabo, their life at Galit the hands Kabo. of Hamas, yep. she I did not take up the opportunity. And yes. Albo needs to rock up there and actually show that he backs... And, and Wong needs to go to Ukraine. The both of them just don't seem to go where yes. the action is. We need our own show, Michael. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's Dalit Cabo, and I actually had her brother on the show this week, and he said the same thing that Penny Wong Dan, didn't bother yes. to visit um, the South, the kibbutz where she was murdered. Just very quickly before we go, Michael Danby, is, is this the end of the Labor Party for the Jews? I mean, you were part of Labor when you were there. There was strong support for Israel and the Jewish community. It seems to have completely evaporated now. Not one Labor figure stood up today. Is this the end? I'm ashamed of the, the Labor Party on this issue. We're refunding UNRWA despite the UN mm. Commission not being finished, demanding ceasefires when the war isn't finished, um, imposing um, people to, to go over there and supervise their democracy. It would never have happened in my day. Things have changed radically since I've left, since Michael Kelly left, um, Stephen Conroy, and above all, our dear beloved Kimberly mm. Kitching, who was so persecuted by this same Wong, who mm. won't uh, have any investigation into her activities, but wants investigation into oh. other people overseas yes. activities. Yes, good point. All right, we've got to go. Michael Danby, Bridget McKenzie, thank you both very much.